Russian telegram channels, continuing to comment on the situation in the Kharkiv direction of the front, noted that the Ukrainian High Military Command continues to pull new forces into the area of the settlements of Tykoi, Lipsy, and Volchensk, even despite critical problems with manpower. All this indicates that the Kyiv regime is preparing to go all in, in this direction of the front line. Even analysts and military experts from numerous Western analytical centers have admitted that the Kyiv authorities are willing to do whatever it takes to oust Russian troops from the northern part of the Kharkiv region. First of all, this is due to the fact that the Kyiv regime is in a state of panic fear. In Kyiv, they are confident that if Russian troops capture Volchensk and Lipsy, then in Vladimir Putin's next peace proposal, the Russian president will already demand that the Kyiv regime withdraw the armed forces of Ukraine from the city of Kharkiv. Against this backdrop, I noticed that Ukrainian telegram channels, experts, bloggers, and even war correspondents completely stopped discussing the counteroffensive operation of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kharkiv direction of the front, which was so widely promoted by Western and Ukrainian media. Even the famous Ukrainian analyst and war correspondent Konstantin Mashevets, who constantly talked about the certainty of the victory of the armed forces of Ukraine on the battlefield, suddenly fell silent and disappeared from TV screens. His last article devoted the analysis of the fighting in the Kharkiv direction of the front, was published on June 7, 2024. Since then, he has not only refused to publish new articles, but even to respond to reporters' questions. Well, it seems that he finally realized that the situation of the armed forces of Ukraine is critical, and the Ukrainian army will continue to retreat not only in the Kharkiv direction of the front, but also in other directions of the combat contact line. In general, even pro-Ukrainian Western experts admit that the morale of Ukrainian soldiers and officers has significantly decreased against the backdrop of numerous failures of the armed forces of Ukraine on the battlefield. Russian super-powerful Fab 3000 aerial bombs have also added fuel to the fire. It is reported that in the last week alone, Russian troops have used these heavy-duty guided aerial bombs against the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces about five times. The fifth in a row video recording of the use of this three-ton super-powerful guided aerial bomb indicates that the Russians began using this weapon of mass destruction on a regular basis. The footage clearly shows how the guided aerial bomb Fab 3000 hits the headquarters of the 92nd Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine in the southeastern part of Volchensk. It is reported that at the time of the attack of this aerial bomb, about 70 Ukrainian soldiers and officers were in this building. The destructive power of the Fab 3000 aerial bomb did not leave even the slightest chance for the survival of the Ukrainian military. This building, along with Ukrainian soldiers and officers, was literally wiped off the face of the earth. Commenting on the use of Fab 3000 aerial bombs, many experts admitted that Russian troops used these heavy-duty bombs only for the sake of psychological effect. According to them, the explosion of a three-ton cruise aerial bomb has a demoralizing effect even on the most experienced and solid fighters of the armed forces of Ukraine. Furthermore, according to war correspondents, the aerial bombs of the Fab family demoralized even the fighters of the most combat-ready brigade of the Ukrainian army. We are talking about the 82nd Separate Airborne Assault Brigade under the designation Cardia. It is reported that it was precisely because of the guided aerial bombs of the Fab family that the command of this brigade had to use new forces, since most of its fighters were destroyed or shell-shocked. Meanwhile, on the night of June 27, Russia launched another massive missile attack on the territory of Ukraine. This time, military facilities in the Ivano-Frankivsk, Odessa, Kiev, Kharkiv, and Khmelnytsky regions were subjected to missile attacks. It is reliably known that during this attack, 
the Russian armed forces used various types of rockets, ranging from Kinsol hypersonic missiles to caliber cruise missiles. So, in the Ivano-Frankivsk region, in the city of Kolomia, at least two Russian Kinsol hypersonic missiles hit a classified military facility in the southeastern part of the city. According to sources in the Russian military department, it was a decision-making center in which Ukrainian high-ranking officers, together with their NATO colleagues, developed the plan of the combat operations in the Kherson direction of the front. According to preliminary data, as a result of this missile attack, about 20 high-ranking officers of the armed forces of Ukraine, including officers of the North Atlantic Alliance, were killed. In the Odessa region, near the village of Lebedevka, Russian-caliber cruise missiles hit and destroyed two warehouses of fuels and lubricants. In the Kiev region, 25 kilometers southwest of the city of Kiev, Russian hypersonic missiles hit and destroyed a classified facility that produced FPV drones for the armed forces of Ukraine. In addition, one air defense system SAMP-T was also destroyed in that area. Numerous explosions were also heard in the city of Kharkiv last night. Independent monitoring services have recorded at least three powerful explosions in the western part of the city. It is reported that the Russians struck at the place of temporary deployment of personnel of the armed forces of Ukraine and foreign mercenaries. Unfortunately, as of June 28, there are still no exact data on the number of victims among Ukrainian and Western militants. In the Khmelnytsky region, Russian hypersonic missiles once again hit the NATO military airbase in the city of Starokostyantinov. As it turned out, the day before this attack, NATO countries brought special equipment to this airfield to restore the damaged infrastructure of this military facility. According to the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation, Kinsol hypersonic missiles successfully hit and destroyed all the intended targets at the Starokostyantinov airbase. This NATO airbase in the Khmelnytsky region remains the main military facility from where American F-16 fighter jets should have to take off for combat missions. My friends, regular Russian missile attacks on this airbase not only destroyed the infrastructure of this military facility, making it impossible to use American F-16 fighter jets, but also led to the death of at least 10 Ukrainian military pilots, among whom were also representatives of the armies of NATO countries, 